When searching for a new game engine, usually people look at a couple of different things. And those things play a super important role because they're factored into their final decision whether to use that engine or not. Let's find out together what is Godot's biggest misunderstanding. I'm Adrian and welcome to Redefine. It's easy to get lost into details when hunting for a new game engine. Does it support 2D or 3D or both? Is it performant or not? Or is it free or not? These are just a couple of questions people keep asking and asking over and over again. In this video we will look at three misunderstandings. I could not decide which one is the, the biggest, so if you can help me with that or if you have different suggestions I would love to hear them in the comment section down below. There is a common knowledge that with Godot you can only make 2D games and not 3D games. But is that true? Right out of the bat you can find out quite easily that Godot does provide a rich feature set for to making 2D games and to create an awesome experience. But what does it provide in regards to 3D? And frankly, Godot does offer quite a lot of 3D features out of the box. Like for example, importing a wide range of 3D formats or PBR rendering, which is used also by Unity and Unreal or even screen space effects like ambient occlusion, reflections, depth of field and more. The engine is quite heavy packed with features for 3D stuff. It even has more like grid maps which are not in Unity or Unreal which provide you with a flexible way of creating levels on the go. But still, why people think Godot is not suited for 3D games and is that true or false? Well, there are two things that I've discovered personally looking up on the internet and doing my own research. And those are Godot doesn't support occlusion cooling. That is the technique that hides the objects that are in the camera's view angle but are occluded by other elements. Those elements should not appear but right now the engine doesn't have a way how to deal with those. And this reduces the performance in some cases. The other thing is that the Godot engine uses an outdated rendering API, OpenGLS 2 and 3, and it doesn't quite match the performance of DirectX, for example. Are these enough to deter people from making 3D games at the moment? No, they're not enough. You can do a lot of 3D games, as you can see on YouTube, there are people are making 3D games of Godot as we speak. Of course, they limit you in some ways with some particular types of games. But if that's really important for you, then you should wait for version 4 of Godot which addresses both of the issues either with Vulkan implementation that allows modern rendering techniques and also with implementation of the occlusion cooling which fixes the performance of the engine if necessary. But I do tell you that in a lot of 3D games you actually don't need all of these features to make a, a cool looking game with what we have at the moment. Another common misunderstanding is the performance of the native scripting language, Godot's GD script. A lot of people coming from Unity mostly are asking for C Sharp support. Let's find out if you actually need to use C Sharp because GD script is very much tightly integrated with the engine and does provide an advantage than using a traditional language like C Sharp. By the way, I found this interesting video doing a proper comparison between the performance of C Sharp and GD script, both threaded and regular. And we do see some cool features. I don't want to disclose all of the conclusions of that video, so you should check it out. I'll link it in the description down below. What I found interesting is the fact that when using simple logic, which most of the game make use, C Sharp actually adds an overhead to that script when uh, GD script doesn't add an overhead. If you're doing heavy algorithms, like for example sorting a list or um, figuring out AI for hundreds of units at the same time, or some specific games which you'll look into a minute, then probably going to C Sharp is the way. But in most cases, sticking with GD script is more than enough to make a full game. So what are the niche cases where you do need optimizations? Well, I found out there are a couple of them. So for example, if you are making an RTS game where you have lots of units, but right now RTSs are not so popular, so we're okay with that. The other one, which is kind of popular genre, is factory building game, where you still have to do a lot of processing and you might need or you have to go to the C Sharp level to implement those features. But for 2D games, for 3D shooters, mostly you can get away with GD script and you don't even have to go lower to C Sharp or C++. Most of the mobile games don't need that much performance. Of course, they can benefit for increased performance in some cases, but most of them, when you just have to deal with simple shapes and a couple of uh, objects 
on the screen at the same time they won't bother you in any way another trending topic that i've seen people misunderstanding although is the fact that it cannot provide premium features as it's a not a premium engine and is that true if we just take a look at blender and after version 2.8 they actually do provide a lot of premium features and the tool is actually an open source one so how is that possible? In your daily life, you might actually make use of open source libraries in some applications that you use. So open source does not equal poor quality in any way. And of course, as more people come to the Godot community and keep supporting the engine with money, that money goes directly to people to improve it and not for someone's profits, like in case of both companies Unity and Unreal, because in the end, businesses are made for profit and non-profit foundation as well. You get the idea. Also, fun fact, even if you're using Unity or Unreal, you do have to rely on 3D party support. You probably have already some tools downloaded for from their own asset stores. So that kind of like, okay, we have premium features from this, but then we get third party support from the asset store. And that's normal. And also, Godot does have some really solid third party systems. Like uh, what comes into my mind right now is Dialogic which offers a really cool way to have um, dialogue in your game and have it implemented. And the other one, Scatter, which allows you to put grass over pieces of land really fast. These are just two of them. There are a lot of them in the asset store and in Godot's asset store, everything is free at the moment. Of course, probably they will think of ways how authors can monetize their work. Right now, everything is free and some of them are really cool so you can check them out right now what do you think which misunderstanding is the biggest or is it another one i'm curious about this so please do leave a comment down below and if you find this interesting don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel i'm adrian and i'll see you in the next one